Greetings, Laughing Lagomorphs, fans, watchers. Today I want to talk about or just touch on uh, the issue of uh, rabbit meat. And um, I know I did like a upcoming video about it. Today I wanted to um, offer a uh, a compromise because I, I just know that people are going to do the meat rabbit industry standard type thing in their backyards and I know there is legislation going on for the commercial aspect but um, if the same standards are going to carry over into the urban uh, farming movement, then you know the the same cruelty is still there. And so, um, realizing that people are going to do this, you know, despite whatever happens, here's what I propose. And I ran this past uh, just today. Um, I ran this past a good friend of mine who <clears throat> had bunnies, mostly for pets, but um, uh, anyway, they, they had relocated and to a surprisingly warmer climate than North Texas, but <laughs> whatever. Anyway, the summer was brutal. Um, it was 115 degrees. The bunnies were miserable. So <clears throat> her husband built a, uh, I don't want to say a shack, but like, um, a tool shed type situation, um, insulated it and put, uh, AC in and they still couldn't get the temperature to stay at the 80 degree or lower mark, which is what all rabbits need to avoid heat stroke, uh, different diseases. The frozen water bottle practice, it doesn't work. Um, the bunnies are miserable. They just can't express it. And they just keel over, basically, and you just go, gee, I wonder what happened to that bunny. It was only two years old. So, um, my proposal is that, you know, is okay, they were north of here, and it was still too hot. It was, as she said, too hot for human beings. So, they've moved further north. Um, but it was a really, really good point because here her husband and, and she um, were, you know, trying to be good stewards. You know, these were pets. Um, she has an allergy, so they couldn't be, well, they don't really have a house. This Anyway, it's a story. I don't want to get off topic. But the bottom line is her husband built a shed or you know something like that and he's very adept at doing these things I mean you know it, it wasn't a faulty job that that made this difficult but here's my proposal just that okay you know you know how you can go to any of the big box stores or if you have carpentry skills you can build one yourself build a small uh, shed type building, a building, you know, with windows maybe. Um, and what you're going to need to put in there is air conditioning for number one and keep it at 80 degrees or below and be prepared if you live in, um, you know, climates that change through the season, um, rabbits can't uh, regulate temperature up above, uh, I mean, below 50 degrees. Um, and I'm speaking in Fahrenheit, so if there are any um, 
international viewers, I apologize. I don't know what that translates to in Celsius. So, they, you know, it'd be ideal to have two windows so that the bunnies can get, you know, light. Um, of course, you can, you know, cover those windows with something sheared or, or put some material so that, you know, the light reflects outside. You know, there are different things that you could do that way. And then set up X pens. So I would start out with two box and two does. And on one side of the building, I would put the four X pens. Um, and of course, space between them in case there's any kind of conflict. Um, and I would do boy, girl, or, you know, whatever, just opposite sexes, you know, and control breed. So what I mean by control breed is you, you have, you, you put the, actually what you would do is you would take the dough and you would put in, put her in the box pen. You wouldn't do it the other way around because then you're going to have a mess. You're going to have a big fight. Okay. And you know, you, you have a calendar on the Doe's, uh, pen, you know, her name, I don't know, whatever you want to do it, but minimally the date she was bred and then you're going to count forward 30 days and expect a date, you know, due date. So leave her as long as they're not fighting for 24 hours in the uh, X pen that you've set up for the buck and or you know watch the process <laughs> and you make sure it happens and then you take the dough out and put her back in to her her pen do the same thing with your other dough and buck. Um, and then you'll know, you know, by based on the dates, I, I would say 15, two weeks before the due date, put the nesting box, a nice nesting box in the dough, the dough's pen. Uh, with all the material she would need, um, I, I wouldn't do the straw or whatever because that can cause all kinds of corneal scratches and things like that. So um, let her build her nest, let her feel safe. If you need to put plexiglass between the pens, do that. If there's any kind of fighting or whatever, because you know that that will happen. Um, you know they don't. They don't mate for life. Once the mating is done, uh, the buck goes away. And uh, if, if the doe is, is stressed out, she will, you know, it just, you know, it, it just won't be good. I, I've witnessed this, you know. You can't do breeding well outside. It just, it, it doesn't work, okay? Um, and, and it needs to be selective because you need to monitor that nest box. You need to be able to have access to that ne uh, nest, nesting box. And your doe needs to have room to run around um, and, and be a bunny. And she should have toys and so should the, the, the bucks. I hope I, I'm not mixing up buck and does and I hope you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, you know, all, you know, everything that would entertain them. They need to be entertained. They need to have things to chew on. They need hidey houses. They need, they, they need those kind of things. Um, and they need to be on the ground. I haven't, I don't know if I've stressed that enough and they potty box train in a snap. And so you're not going to have to worry about huge amounts of cleanup um in their area i mean if you have a garden you can just take the potty box and dump it outside on your garden and 
you know, hose it out or give it, you know, ideally a, a rinse with vinegar and baking soda, a scrub, whatever, rinse it out, refill it with the pine pellets and a layer of hay, and we're back in business, you know. Snappity snap, okay? And you've got everything under control. Um, the other thing that I would put besides air conditioning, because you're not going to be sitting in this room and, you know, um, or sitting in this structure is like a, a baby monitor or a nanny cam type thing so that you can see um, just in case, you know, one gets loose or there's a skirmish or something happens like that. Then on the other side, would, you would have the same X pens, maybe two bigger. Instead of having four, you would have two, but they would be bigger. And those would be your grow out pens. And again, put a few potty boxes in there and all hay. They have to have hay. They must, that's, that's over, at least minimally 80% of their diet. Um, and then fresh veggies and things like that. And if, if the weather is, you know, good, um, you can let them nibble on your grass, but actually your grass is not really nutritious for them. So again, if you're looking at this from the perspective of feeding your family, nutrition for you, okay, well, you got to put it in the bunny. And if you want the, the meat to be clean, you have to make sure there's no diseases, okay? So it, 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 focus on yourself, if anything, and think about what you want to be eating. You want nutritious food, you want it to be disease-free, and um, hopefully you're a good steward and you're willing to go the extra mile because these animals are sacrificing their lives for you and your family. So one quick little point more, and I would love if you would make comments down below. And I've given some, uh, somebody gave me some advice that I need to tweak some things in my YouTube things to try to get more viewers. But anyway, uh, one last thing is, um, oh, it just went out of my head. Oh, your, your dough and your buck, it, it, depending on however many you have, okay? Um, make sure they are from totally different lines. You know, they're not related to each other at all. And, um, your doge, you don't breed your doe every 30 days. Absolutely not. Every 90 days at the maximum. No, minimum? I don't know. Anyway, don't breed. You know, give, give her a chance to recover after she's had a litter. Um, and she should be given alfalfa hay constantly through the process. Um, uh, the same thing with um, the uh, the kitten, the kits, and then when they're growing out, um, alfalfa hay um, all the way until the time you slaughter, which is about six months. And then, and then you know you should ha you should get her uh, the does checked at least that checked by a veterinarian who's experienced with rabbits um, and get, you know, blood tests, you know, drawn to check for some of these diseases that can crop up. And um, a vet check costs 60 bucks. You know, they look in their ears, they make sure that, you know, they, if they have any dental problems or whatever, you know, I mean, seriously, it's, it's not a big deal. Again, health for you, health for the bunny is health for you. And, um, in my next video, I'm going to get into the slaughter process, but that is like an overview 
I I have I could you know I you know I'm I'm going to sketch it out and I'm going to present it to somebody and um, you know um, this is the way I think it should be done. Well, it's not what I think actually. I hate using that expression. This is the most humane way to do this. Um, and I've gotten feedback from people, like I said, who have been in it personally. They've talked to me about it. And, you know, they unwittingly let their rabbits suffer tremendously. And, you know, they're, you know, so sad about that, you know. Um, so I'm going to cut this for now. I don't know exactly how long this went, but again, next video on this topic is going to be about slaughtering. I just want to say while we're here that my cotton tails that I, I do cotton tail rehab also. That's why I know a lot about, uh, wild rabbits. They're doing much better, but still keep praying to St. Mingala. She is the patron saint of rabbits and for their health because they're not out of the woods, but they are doing much better. So thank you, Laughing Lagomorphs fans. Um, I hope you pass this video along. I hope you find it informative and I'd love to hear your comments. Ta-ta!